Hey, hello friends. Thank you for joining me today. I am doing just a very quick broadcast here to let you watch me for a few minutes <clears throat> do <clears throat> part, at least, part of a watercolor sketch of a portrait. <clears throat> let me tell you first a little bit about this assignment. This is a commission. This is actually the sketch for, it's a watercolor sketch for a watercolor commission, if that makes sense. So what I'm doing right now is not the final artwork, but is the um, the comprehensive, the sketch that I'm going to send to my client to see if it meets with her approval. I'll also tell you the the subject matter here, which is quite sensitive and touching. Um, I'm doing this painting for a woman. <clears throat> Let me show you the photograph. The main go-by photograph is here. This is the woman's husband and her son. This is her husband who died, I forget, several years ago, and her son who died last year or early this year. Whew. So what she wanted me to do was a painting of the two of them greeting each other on the other side, shall we say. So, uh, very sweet um, and uh, poignant. So we met together and talked quite a bit. She gave me several photographs. Uh, the, prob the reason I can't use this photograph directly is because um, here, the boy looks like he's about 15 or 16 years old, when in actuality, when he passed away, he was about 25, if I re am remembering right, so 10 years older. So I can't use this face. Um, so anyway, that's the assignment. And let me tell you a little bit about what I'm doing. And again, it's a I, one of the challenges or one of the questions with this assignment, one of my questions to myself and to my client is, hmm what style, what technique do I want to use on this painting or on this illustration? <clears throat> so I'm starting out with, as you can see here, a, a loose pen, pen and ink sketch. Let me tell you how I got to that point. I did, I believe I traced this. Oh no, here we go, here we go. So I traced this, except for his face, I traced that illustration with a light table. I mean, again, it's for those of you, okay? So there's a light table with a light on. So I traced that, and uh, then, then when I was done tracing, of course, that only gives you the big lines, then pulled it aside and finished com by comparing the two. Then I took this illustration and scanned it on my scanner on my computer and made it larger and exaggerated the contrast. So then I traced this onto watercolor paper and that's what I'm working on right now. Does that make sense? Now again, when I say trace, it's like really with tracing, you know, you can only, you can't see much. <laughs> All you can see is the, the big shapes, the big lines. So I, I finished uh, doing this illustration, of course, just eyeballing it using one of these waterproof pens. <clears throat> now, the other thing I'll show you just before, before we get started here, watercolor and certainly watercolor portraiture <clears throat> is certainly not my forte, right? And I want to mention this to you, especially those of you who are students. So I just Googled watercolor portraits, and then I hit image, and here I have hundreds or maybe thousands. How many does it say anymore? Just thousands and thousands and thousands of watercolor portraits. Now, here's the, here's the thing I, I want to warn students or perhaps young people, perhaps, but students of any of any ilk. When you do this kind of thing, 
there, you will be faced with a temptation to think this way. So here, this is a little warning. When you look at this, you'll be tempted, and I don't want to pick on it. I won't blow them up, but I'll just point at some. To, you'll be tempted to look at this one, this one, uh, this whole row, uh, this one. W w it, forgive me here because I, I don't want to offend anybody. But what I'm pointing at here are the weaker, the weaker, less excellent. That, in, that means that I must have an opinion about such things, right? I'm pointing to the less excellent. My point is, <clears throat> you don't look at picture and say, well, I can do better than that. Or, well, I can do that good. Or, I can do better than that. That's not what you, you, you don't pay attention to the ones that aren't so good. If you do, you won't be so good. Now, and if you're, you're the judge, you get to have your own opinion. Let me pick on one here. Let me pick on one. Let me change this to, um, so I only, am only seeing large ones just for a second so I can blow it up good and big. Okay. Now I'm looking for the good ones. No, no, no. And it, again, this means you have to have an opinion <laughs> about what a good watercolor actually looks like. Man, I seem to have eliminated most of them. I don't mean that these aren't any good. I don't mean that, but they are not the best. Oh my goodness, this is very peculiar. I have eliminated all the best ones. Wow. Okay, sorry, hang on. We're going back now to any size. Because <laughs> I want I want to pull up. Okay, very first one here. Uh, cop, I'm going to get this as big as I can. Copy image. Let's switch over to Photoshop new paste get rid of the ruler okay so this in my opinion now there's there there are many 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 others on on google but that in my opinion is a good watercolor painting why well so many reasons color contrast and especially for me an an authentic authentic edge that is to say it's not all it's not overworked and all smooshed together and what i'm doing now is schooling myself i'm just looking at it and say wow so that's what a good i'm just refreshing my mind what does a really good watercolor portrait look like okay so that that's just i do that kind of thing not infrequently in fact oh here since since we're on the subject see these pages right here that I often have sitting right in front of me. I did this some time ago, just along the same lines. These are cityscapes that I think are particularly good. Here's a couple pages by Jeremy Mann. Here's some pages by G. Harvey, uh, Tibor Nagy, Richard Schmid, Eugene Gallion, Lalloway. Okay, got it? Why do I have these? Because I wanna keep present in my mind what good paintings look like. Okay, so that's end of that little detour. <clears throat> now, one more real quick lesson about, before I start painting in earnest, about watercolor portraits. And it is, I wanna show you this. This is, as you can see right here, <laughs> can you read that? This is my portrait watercolor kit. I put this together several years ago when I was doing a number of watercolor portraits. Now, what, what's the difference between this and my regular watercolor tray? And if you can look here, I think you can see this. I've actually got um, all of the colors here uh, Win Windsor Newton, Van Dyke Brown, Da Vinci, Burnt Umber. That one's not labeled, not sure why. Windsor Newton, Brown Matter, Holbein, Burnt Sienna, Windsor Newton, Raw Umber, blah, 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 blah. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, I know what a portrait, a portrait kit means it has all skin tones. That would be false. <laughs> now, it does, I do have, I do have more flesh tones than normal, more brown. So basically all of these are brown, including that one and that one. These are all browns, okay? Uh, but here on the other side of the, of the kit, I've got 
all the usual red, uh, quinacridone red, Holbein ultramarine, a couple the green that's not labeled, don't know why again. Okay. Um, so I have I know I have all colors because in a good in a good watercolor portrait, you're going to use all colors, not just flesh tones. Here is the issue. Drum roll, please. All of the colors in this tray are liftable. Let me say it another way. All, none, of the, none of the colors in this kit are staining colors. In other words, all of these, so that's the research. I remember, I, I pages and pages and pages of look, studying online. And all of these colors can be lifted, especially with a bit of uh, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, right? Here's a good, good well-used, worn-out one. Okay, so that's why this is a, a portrait kit, is because I, they can be lifted out. Now, of course, I don't want to do a lot of lifting. <laughs> my, my preference would be to get it right the first time. But as you and I both know, that does not always happen. So let me do a, just a little bit of um, painting here before I go. And I, I'm, I am going to go fairly quickly. Okay, so I'm looking at the photograph. I guess I'll enlarge this a little bit. I'm looking at the photograph. And uh, looking at my watercolors, I want to match them as close as possible. Now, again, I, I don't consider myself to be a master watercolor painter. I'm a pretty good, and I, I'm saying that I'm a professional, okay? So what I mean is compared to other professionals, I'm a pretty good watercolor painter compared to um, some of the best. I'm not <laughs> compared to uh, Elvaro Castanet <laughs> and, and his ilk. <laughs> no, I'm not worthy to unlatch his shoe, so to speak. Okay? Um, but I have opinions. Oh, yes. <laughs> I have opinions. Oh, here's one that the... Uh, the super smooth, super seamless, uh, no edges watercolor painting is easy. The kind of watercolor painting that is not so easy is a more natural that has edges, edges of strokes. The very thing that drove me crazy when I was a kid, when I was 12, 13, 14, 15 years old and trying to use watercolors, the very thing that drove me crazy, that, that is the, the overlapping strokes, because I wanted to be airbrush smooth when I was a kid, and it was hard to do. Now, as a more mature artist, I go, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Those, the edges on the, uh, in the painting are actually advantageous, beneficial, favorable. That, that is, in fact, what I want. I do not want a airbrush smooth. Uh, like the portrait I showed you just a few minutes ago on my computer, I consider that to be a pretty good, a pretty good uh, watercolor painting. So even with my first layer here, I'm starting with a fairly pale mid-tone flesh tone, and then as it as I go along, I will get darker and add other. Uh, values. I'm also changing the clothing on this, on the sun here. In the photograph here, he's wearing a, a long sleeve button down shirt. And I was told that it's not, not very typical of him. One more word about watercolor. And again, I, I, I've done a lot of watercolor in my lifetime, maybe as, certainly as many years more years of watercolor than I than I have a, of oil painting. Um, let me give you a word picture. One of my favorite word picture. If you're if you are a watercolor painter, then you know that you want to save and spare your whites because once you've covered up the white, it's gone forever. Now with Mr. Magic uh, Magic Eraser, you you can get it back somewhat. But it's still 
never quite like virgin white paper. So you want to lose your whites very, very cautiously. You, you want to leave lots of white. So you paint, in my opinion, again, with a light hand, not filling in. And you don't want, like, you see I'm leaving. Can you see that I'm leaving a lot of white here and there and everywhere in the clothing, on the skin tones? And uh, that's very much on purpose. Here's the word picture that I use. It's a horrible word picture, <laughs> but, it, but it makes the point. Imagine that you are in a car that tragically has driven off the road into a river. And you're in the passenger compartment. And the passenger compartment is slowly or quickly filling up with water. And you take off your seatbelt and you scramble to the ceiling of the car and the the more the car fills up with water the smaller the bubble of life-giving oxygen becomes in the ceiling of the car horrible image horrible image don't have bad dreams please but in watercolor painting that that bubble of air is your white paper that's sort of that's how sort of how how zealously you, you protect it. It's like oxygen. Again, horrible image. But it, it's serious. You do not want to gobble up or allow, allow your white paper to be dirtied unnecessarily. So you, you advance very slowly, preserving And of course, with the way I'm painting, the way I'm going to, and again, I'm just going to send this to my client and see if she likes it. If she doesn't, we'll go in a different direction. But I'm painting with, with fairly free strokes. I, I want the edges to show. I am not trying to achieve, um, I am not trying to achieve airbrush smoothness. In my opinion, that is not the best. Yeah, that's a horrible analogy, isn't it? <laughs> I know it is. <laughs> horrible. <laughs> uh, but it does the job. <laughs> it helps me remember, oh yeah. Man, treat that white paper like it's sacred. You don't gobble it up quickly. You don't get out a big brush and plaster stuff. You go very, very slowly. Okay, that's looking a little bit tight and contrived to me, frankly. But uh, I'm going to play with it a little bit more. And, uh, and we'll see how it goes. I'll, I may bring you in more for more on this project. I may not. Right now, I have to go meet with my bookkeeper lady who does her part to keep me out of jail <laughs> by helping me pay my legal tax.